In the early 1960s, the Bristol Omnibus com Company would not employ black or Asian people to work on its buses, and this led to the 1963 Bristol bus boycott. Bristol youth worker Paul Stevenson joined forces with the West Indian Development Council to lead a four-month-long boycott of the company's buses by local residents, which eventually resulted in the company overturning the color bar. In Bristol, back in the, the 60s, 50s, 60s, you know, discrimination was so prevalent in Bristol. Um, for example, what brought about the Bristol boy bus boycott is that a group of people were talking um, and having heard that they weren't employing black people, decided to phone up. Among the group was Paul Stevenson. Um, who had a, a, a student and they, he would, would have liked to become, to be employed. So Paul phoned up the bus, bus company and secured an interview in the name of Guy Bailey. Um, Paul had a very British posh accent. So when he came Guy turned up for the job. The receptionist was taken aback <laughs> that he was a black person and told him that she didn't think so, he couldn't have a job there. But she also went to the manager um, and said, your, <laughs> your appointment is here. And he's a black man. Straight away, the manager said, well, tell him the vacancies have gone, they've been filled, and we don't employ black people here in any case. So Guy went back to the group, and you know, and that is where it started, that we needed to do something about the situation. So they, they, they recruited, you know, well, told people about it, and we just had them, um, demonstration very peaceful demonstrations to but bu bus the bus boycott to boycott all the buses and um, and that is where it started i felt very angry because you know you're using the buses they don't stop you from going on the buses but yet they can't and they won't employ you um, but they're willing to take your money to pay their drivers so you know it was well no we need to change this but it was it was interesting to see that because they had black people on the buses in London so Bristol was the exception you know We women were more, mostly making the teas and so for when they're having their meetings and their strategy meetings as how they're going to go about the, the boycott and then we would be in the procession with the, the placards but the men were the ones in the forefront they were the ones that was doing all the, the negotiating with the, bus with the bus company and things like that. It was a scary because it was not a rowdy mob. It was a very peaceful demonstration um, compared to today's demonstrations. You know, we were sort of very, very low bottom of the scale. Um, so, you know, we protested quietly, peacefully, but we got our points across. Because as they say, you know, softly, softly, catchy monkey. So, you know, you don't have to scream and shout. You're not going to get heard. Nobody's going to listen to you. But you have a, a way of getting around and talking to people and making them see your point of view. And therefore, you 
in a winning situation. I felt great because not being a driver, I depended on the bus. And it's all well and good for them to take my money when I go on the bus, but it's not well and good for them to employ someone of my colour. So it was, it was a victory. It took a while for the change to happen, but the most important thing was that the same day that the Omnibus company decided to change their rules, employ um, black people, it was the same day of Martin Luther King's speech, I had a dream, and it was indeed a dream. I think that uh, there has been a lot of change, um, but there's still an awful lot that can be done. The situation as it is in 2021, 2020, 21, you know, is with all the coming to light of different things that has happened to the black people in Britain and how the younger generation is dealing with it. Back in my days, you know, we used to not turn a blind eye, but deal with it in a more subtle way and a more peaceful way than some of them would like to do now, see, because they are in your face. They tell you exactly what is what and they get on with it. They are seeking changes and I know it's going to come, maybe not in my lifetime complete, but um, I think there will be a lot of changes and there, there should and there need to be changes. The Bristol bu bus boycott was, to coin a phrase, a pussycat. It was soft. It was very, very peaceful. you got to remember back in those days, it was you had the Martin Luther King in America who got what he wanted or protested in a peaceful way he got heard so we decided to uh, adopt that attitude as well we weren't going to go fight and burn places down and things like that it was a softly softly approach and we got things done not um you know in a violent way because that that is what they want us to do they want you to fight and go on and say oh there i told you so that's what they're like so you know compared to uh, in, in the 60s to now, it's totally different. The younger generation is not going to stand for what the older generation stood for or stand back and take. You know, they are going to, because let's face it, 90% of them are British. They were born here. So, you know, when you come to this thing about some people saying, go back where you come from, where? Bristol? Bath? London? You know, they were born here. They haven't got nowhere else to go back. Yes, their parents and grandparents came from the Caribbean, but this is their country and they are going to fight for it.